Farmer. So the 20-year-old Italian Andrea Fontana leads the field as we go back green flag racing just shy of nine minutes left on the clock as the pack blast towards La Source. This section of the track hasn't had any rain whatsoever as Dominic Farnbacker looking to the inside of Mike Benham and the Garage 59 McLaren. Benham having none of it. He in turn will fancy his chances of well he's got a lap Antonio Coimbra in the sport in New Mercedes but Coimbra I can't imagine he's going to be in a hurry to jump off the racing line as they all fight their way downhill towards Eau Rouge which is still pretty dry. Rob Bell makes a little bit of ground. He finds a way around Vitantonio Liuzzi. Com Ledegar also making progress as down the Kemmel straight once more. The spray gets kicked up. It's going to be driving blind for those behind it would appear as if Dominic Farnbacker has made the move on Mike Benham. Indeed he has as Benham only now goes around the sporting new Mercedes. So Farnbacker goes third. Benham slips to fourth. Marcello Hahn is there in fifth. Jordan Witt is sixth. Albert Costa seventh from Renko Bear out of Viega. Some of those behind and the progress that they can make as the Lamborghini and the Ferrari head the Lexus into the Bruxelles hairpin. This is where it was so slippery when the rain came down, but fortunately in the first half of the field, no issues, but Fontana has got Perazzini and Farnbacker right on his tail now. He's behind in the gloom. Thomas Biaggi thrusting past Francesco Cini, Com Ledegar looking to the inside of Vitantonio Liuzzi. Luzzi in turn trying to threaten Rob Bell. It's Marcello Hart to the inside of Antonio Coimbra through Pouin. Coimbra edged out wide. As Dominic Farnbacker has made the move on Perazzini. So Farnbacker in the Lexus goes second. And we're back to where we were. The Lexus hustling the Imperiale Racing Lamborghini Huracan. But this is going to be a tall order, one would suspect, for Andrea Fontana. Farnbacker a little bit more experienced than the young Italian. Here's the move from Marcello Hahn. It's just Lapri. I'm not sure that Antonio Coimbra saw him until it was a little bit late in the day. And the Mercedes just elects to ease out and run wide. Now the Lamborghini gets the power down, accelerates towards Blanchimont, back into the daylight, so to speak, onto the drier section of the circuit and really for Fontana he just needs to copy Postiglione's play but from earlier in the race but he leaves a gaping hole to the inside into the bus stop chicane only closes it at the last minute it gives Dominic Farnbacker the opportunity to maybe challenge as they come out of the bus stop chicane and the Lexus is well poised to possibly make the run even in towards the Lassau's hairpin First three cars running as one. Perazzini doesn't want anything to do with it. Oh, Fontana squeezes Farnbacker. Contact between them. The Lexus hustles its way past, but Perazzini might claim both scalps as they run down towards Eau Rouge. A little bit hard to see from that angle, but Farnbacker was slowed, and Pier Giuseppe Perazzini takes the lead of the race. Dominic Farnbacker into second. Andrea Fontana slips to third as they climb out of Radion. They're absolutely on the limit of adhesion as the Lexus looks to get a good run on the Ferrari, but Perazzini, with the chance of victory on the cards, well, he could have defended that a little bit more. As it is, Farnbacker's got the inside line as they sprint along the Kemmel straight on the brakes into Le Corme. Dominic Farnbacker glides through, takes the lead away from Perazzini, and so we're potentially looking at a repeat result from Estoril from Avila and Costa victorious in race one. The Farnbacker's victorious in race two. Doesn't really quite tell the story of things though, does it? As Dominic Farnbacker leads through the Bruxelles hairpin. Second place of Perazzini. Third, Fontana. Fourth is Mike Benham. Fifth, Albert Costa. Here's another look at it. Not surprisingly under investigation. Well, there wasn't a huge amount of space, but Dominic Farnbacker was committed to the move and decided to go for it nonetheless. A bit of frustration. Imperial Racing Team has through Pouin. Albert Costa closing up onto the tail of Mike Benham. Albert Costa might be able to extend his championship lead further still. He can get himself on to the outright race podium again. It's going to be the challenge as he chases Benham as they slide their way through Fania. Benham in the garage with Nyman McLaren, though, looking set for second place in the Pro-Am class as Costa slips around the outside, quite literally into Stavolo. Still lots of standing water over on this section of the circuit. Four headlights ablaze, he accelerates on his way. 
towards Longchamp. So Dominic Farnbacher leads. Second place, Pierre Giuseppe Perazzini. Third, Andrea Fontana. Fourth, Albert Costa. Fifth, this man, Mike Benham. In sixth, it's Marcello Hahn. Seventh, Jordan Witt. Eighth is Com Ledegaard. Ninth, Lorenco Barral de Viega. And tenth is Rob Bell. You can see in the background, progress of the likes of Ledegaard and Bell. Really something to behold. There's Rob Bell looking to the inside of Lorenco Barral de Viega. The BMW, which shone so brightly in the early stage of the race, may be having a slightly less enjoyable time a bit late on as the nimble McLaren draws alongside. Meanwhile, the challenge from Com Ledegaard. He looks to the inside of Jordan Witt on the brakes into La Source. Through goes Ledegaard. So that promotes him into seventh overall. One more place for Com Ledegaard, and that will put he and Alex West on the Pro-Am podium. He's got Marcello Hahn ahead of him, and it looks eminently possible if Ledegaard's going to make that move. We're into the penultimate lap of the race. And they head back towards the wet section of the circuit. There's Dominic Farn back at the race leader. Second place, Perizzini. Third for Fontana. Fourth for Costa. Fifth is Benham. Sixth is a couple of sets of headlights, and it's Com Ledegaard who emerges into sixth place. He takes third position as a result in the Pro-Am class. Dropping down the place then is Marcello Hahn. So this is good news for Garage 59. They've got both their cars potentially on the Pro-Am rostrum. It's Andrea Fontana slithers wide at Bruxelles, almost presents the opportunity for Albert Costa. This for third in the race overall. And Costa is today's race winner. But for a couple more laps, one wonders. Although pushing very, very hard. So Farnbacher clear out front. Perazzini relatively safe in second. This fight for third. Well, we've seen that Andrea Fontana is not afraid to get his elbows out and very pointy in order to maintain the position. For Albert Costa, there is also a championship lead to preserve here. So he uh, doesn't necessarily want to uh, risk everything and come up with a double zero. Fontana, you see just a confidence dab on the brakes at Stavolo. Then it sets the car up nicely. Plenty of poise and traction. The blast towards Bonchimont. They'll go into the final lap of the race this time around. around Blanchimont. Wipe as a go-go for Costa. He flashes his headlights at Andrea Fontana. Fontana rightly calculates that the Lexus isn't near enough to look to the inside into the bus stop chicane. Still this section of the circuit. Very dry. Messages being communicated from the pit wall to the drivers. To behind Rob Bell. So poised to make a little bit of ground as Com Ledegaard looks the inside of Mike Benham. This is the challenge for fifth and sixth place. The two cars, of course, running the uh, Garage 59 stable. Ledegaard threatening Benham. Rob Bell trying to push his way through. There was potential for contact behind between Jordan Witt and Marcello Hahn. We'll pick that momentarily. Yes, there was. And Hahn gets demoted. Rob Bell glides through as down Kemmel straight for the final time. Potentially all changed for third. Somewhere in the murk is Albert Costa. Andrea Fontana right alongside him. Costa squeezing on the brakes as Ledegar looks like he's going to have made the move on Mike Benham to go second in the Pro-Am class. So, yes, he has. So the place gained for Ledegar. Benham slips back to sixth overall, still in the Pro-Am rostrum. And this is the fight for third place in the race overall. Fontana taking a very tight inside line to Bruxelles. Costa trying to look for some grip to the outside. There may have been some, but it wasn't enough to propel him around the outside of the Lamborghini. So the pair of them swing left downhill towards Pouin. Educated right foot required, or educated right feet required, because the power available to the drivers now vastly exceeding the grip and having to be very delicate with the throttle. Dominic Farnbacher. 5.6 seconds clear of Pierre Giuseppe Perizzini. Perizzini going to win the Pro-Am class. Shotchi qualifying in 13th place. Putting that car well up the order. Oh, and a mistake from Andrea Fontana into Fania. This 
possibly the opportunity for Albert Costri goes to the outside. Lamborghini. Oh, there's going to be contact as Fontana slides. Oh, more contact. And around goes Fontana, who slithers back across into the gravel trap at Stavolo and is comprehensively beached. Oh, that was very, very unfortunate frustration for Andrea Fontana and Vito Postiglioni. They had been on the podium throughout the course of the race, but contact on the exit of Fania as Dominic Farnbacker in the Farnbacker Racing Lexus is going to come through, take his second victory of the season as the Lexus accelerates out of the final corner. Dominic and Mario Farnbacker win the most dramatic of races here at spa Francorchamps. Second place to Pier Giuseppe Perazzini and Marco Ciocci. They win the Pro-Am class. And third position goes to Albert Costa and Philip Frommenvila just from Com Ledegar and Alex West with Mike Benham and Duncan Tappy taking fifth. Jordan Witt and Michael Meadows, then Rob Bell and Sean Balf in seventh. As everybody surges across the line, quite incredible racing. What about the GTM class? Here they come up to the line and it is going to be Alex Moisev and Davide Rizzo who claim the class win again. Here we see it again. Fontana slid into Costa. Costa then moved back across. Tagged Fontana at the wrong angle. The Lamborghini bumped into the wall and then across into the gravel trap. Very unfortunate. I'm sure, they're, well, it's already under investigation. I'm sure that that will be discussed.